Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there, folks. Welcome to Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and my guest is going to be the section leader of veterinary toxicology at Iowa State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, Dr. Steve Inslee. We're going to talk about a syndrome that we've seen quite a bit of during the winter. It's weak calf syndrome. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. We own and operate Green Mountain Angus Ranch out of Rygate, Montana. We've been in the Angus business for about 30 years now. We've been using the Multi-Min product for about seven years. We started using it uh, off the recommendation of our embryologist. He suggested that we give our recip cows a shot uh, prior to putting embryos in. Uh, we had a real good uh, conception rate that spring and we've been using the product ever since. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Hey, welcome to Doc Talk. Here's my guest, Dr. Steve Inslee. Steve, thanks for spending time with us, taking time out of your schedule. Well, I appreciate the time. I always love to talk about anything tox toxicology-wise for veterinary <laughs> medicine, so. Well. You do a good job of it. All right. Well, thanks. It's very, <laughs> very interesting. I think to me, that's why, we, we, you know, try to get students interested in toxicology, but it's a, uh, it's always a tough sell. But well, it is. Until you're in practice. Right. And then, right. it is one of the most intriguing. You know, I, I think that that you know some of my most fond cases and and things that you could really get your hands around. Right. Were toxicology cases and, and uh, very worthwhile. Exactly, That's, that was my experience too. I practiced for 15 years before I went back to school and worked on my toxicology degree, but that, that, those are the cases I always remembered the most. You know, and so. Well, you're gonna talk about one today, this weak calf syndrome. Right, it's a, it's a, it's a syndrome that we've recognized for quite some time and it's, it's a, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of variables involved and, and uh, we, we actually did some work at Iowa State about three years ago trying to, trying to look to see if we could identify uh, some of the causes of, of weak calf syndrome. So we, so we uh, asked, asked the referring, or veterinarians that sent cases to us if they had a, a case. Uh, our case definition was we wanted a calf that was born, uh, unable to get up, may, may or may not have nursed, but died within 48 hours of being born. And then we, uh, we got samples from those calves, uh, f tissue to look at under the microscope and also tissues we could look at in toxicology to try to see if there was a common thread or something in, in, in all those calves that we could you know, identify as an issue. And so we got, we got uh, actually over about two years, we got about 100 calves that fit, that fit that definition. And uh, we looked at, we did uh, uh, histopathology on those calves tissues. And then we also looked at trace minerals uh, vitamin A, vitamin E, and uh, and we we uh, one of the things that we found consistently, you know, is is uh, you know nutritional involvement with this. So uh, the health of the dam or the body condition score is very critical. But uh, it you know vitamin E was one of the things that we saw consistently very low or or almost absent sometimes. Uh, other trace minerals you know weren't, weren't as consistent. Uh, vitamin A, we looked at. Uh, vitamin A is passed from the dam to the to the neonate via colostrum. So if an if an animal nursed, we could we we could accurately determine vitamin A status. If they didn't nurse, it's, it's made it a little more difficult. But we, you know, vitamin A and vitamin E were two of the things we consistently saw low in these calves. And that'll go with some of the, uh, you know, the the length of the winter, the the forage availability, how much we're haying these cows good hay storage, right? Uh, all the things that sometimes we take for granted when we're walking around out at our place. And right, I mean the supplements, uh, the supplements are something that we looked at to see. Uh, the, the forages get depleted of vitamin A and vitamin E very quickly, by, especially by this time of year, so they don't contain any. So without, you know, without adequate supplementation and, and intake, you know, that's the other key. We may, we may have a good trace mineral vitamin mix out there but if they don't consume it then we're, they're not you know they're not going to get the intake that we need as exactly. well so well 
We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to get more into the syndrome of what's going on in these calves and, and some of the things we can do about it. You're watching Doc Talk. More with Dr. Steve Inslee here after the break. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. You know, I think people are just kind of born with a passion. I wouldn't be where I am today without that horse. Oh, I'm not passionate about horses. That's just something that's in here. I, I can't explain it. Some people go to a job every day. I just go do what I love to do. That's all I know is horse. The bottom line, we're for the horse. It's whatever we can do to make life better for the horse, wherever they are, whatever they do. It's just magic, that's all. It just, they it just, they got me. If we always do what's right for the horse, we will never go wrong. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enriflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from Kansas State University, and my guest is a Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine alumni who is now the section leader of veterinary toxicology at Iowa State University, Dr. Steve Inslee, who's an Onega, Kansas. Uh, native, if if people know where Onega is, most a lot right. of people around here do. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Usually, I didn't think anybody but me knew where that was. <laughs> well, in northeast Kansas, Onega, right. uh, you, you you at least got to go through it right. to get there. Right. So <laughs> right. it's hard for me to get used to you in red. Yeah. Well, I'm a, I've, I've been at Iowa State for quite a while now, and yeah, it's a great it's a great veterinary school. K State is a great school. Iowa State's got a great school. It's it's uh, Actually, where veterinary toxicology started, and that's that's where my uh, you know one of my uh, interests were to be able to go to Iowa State is they've got great uh, you know great laboratory support. Unfortunately, veterinary toxicology takes a lot of expensive instrumentation, and and uh, because Iowa State got you know was the first really diagnostic lab to do veterinary toxicology, they were able to you know build up a nucleus and you know of of people and equipment that you know makes makes what I do a lot a lot easier. Strong history. It is strong history. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's talk about this weak calf syndrome and and what are some you know I, I know we said as calves that are weak and die in the first 48 hours but you know kind of run me through what their 
well, looking like and and well normally the the the, the primary cause of death in, in neonatal calves is, is diarrhea and when we have a producer that um, you know has a high has high more calf mortality and you know it's not diarrhea or it's not respiratory disease and then we you know try to investigate and see what's see what the issues are and uh, you know many times this weak calf syndrome is multifactorial you know dystocia how fast the calf is born how uh, you know the clostrum intake being adequate and then then you know definitely the nutrition of the dam is is very key in this syndrome and so the calves will be born weak can't get up you know no response to treatment at all and uh, if we identify that as this weak calf syndrome, then there, there's some different approaches we have to take versus our normal calf scar mortality or calf scar respiratory disease treatment. When we see something like this in a herd, <clears throat> do you see it in, in some clusters or, you know, is it one aberrant case or is it generally, you know, it's, it's yeah. something that we're seeing more, more numbers of? Yeah, normally, uh, you know, normally we don't see, you know, too many single cases. It's, it's a usually a problem with the herd. There's been diet, you know, diet issues that w maybe weren't addressed correctly or not identified. And then uh, when we when we see these, unfortunately, you know, it's it's usually uh, early on in the calving season and, and, you know, trying to make a change at that time can be difficult nutritionally to turn things around. Sure, the horse is out of the barn. Correct. Yeah. Well, we're gonna uh, move on to a break, but, um, you know, this is something that, you know, has plagued the industry for, for a long time. It's not something that you just, all of a sudden, I, I can still remember, you know, the colder the winter, the more of these we see and right. and things to that nature. Right. It's a, it's a syndrome that's been around for a long time. A lot of people have looked at it trying to identify, you know, one cause or one thing that we can do. There, there is not, there you know, probably is not one cause. So it's a syndrome that we deal with and multi multifactorial. And, yep. When we, when we come back, let's jump into some of those factors and uh, start start hammering this thing out. Sounds great. Might have it solved. Well, I wish. <laughs> Thanks for watching us. We'll be back after the break. This Meet the Veterinarian is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Dr. Robert Gentry has 31 years of experience in mixed practice, focusing a majority of his time on beef cattle. As a founding director of the Academy of Rural Veterinarians, Dr. Gentry recognizes the need to encourage interest in life as a rural practitioner and advocate for rural veterinarians. He served as vice president of ARV in 2011 and 2012. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Hi there, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Be sure to join me next week as we're going to talk about veterinary medicine and a secure egg supply. Be sure to join me here every Monday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on RFD TV, and I'll see you down the road. This hog is Hanover Hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. <laughs> The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability.
Welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Steve Ensley from Iowa State University. And we're talking about the weak calf syndrome. And as we left, we're talking about the, you know, kind of the multifactorial. And we hit on the nutrition side with the trace minerals and, and, and vitamins and making sure that we have those copper, vitamin A, vitamin E in there. What are some of the other factors that are maybe well those are the as far as for my lab and what we like to look at those are things we you know we we like to get a liver from the calf that's the best source to try to measure these and so we'll look at trace minerals we've got a panel now we've got an expensive piece of equipment where we can look at uh, multiple minerals at one time on one analysis so we've got about 13 that we actually look at in our panel and then we look at the vitamin a and the vitamin e concentration in the liver so we can we can see if those are, you know, if those are part of the problem or some of the issues with the weak calf syndrome. And, it, and nutrition is one part. You know, there's there's other infectious disease, dystocia, a lot of other factors as well. But that's that's something that we feel like we can identify quickly with our with our analytical ability now and see if it, see if that's involved or not to to know whether we need to correct that or not. Well, and then if some of these calves are nutritionally challenged and go through dystocia, right. you know, you just kind of get right. that stair-stepping effect of, right. of stressors. So that's, yeah, that's why the weak calf syndrome can be extremely frustrating, I know, for the owners because we, we, you know, we talk about it as a syndrome and being, you know, there's a lot of factors involved and, you know, we'll, we'll, what we need to identify what they are as quickly as possible and try to correct the things that we can. And, you know, for, for me as a veterinary toxicologist, we, you know, nutrition is one of the things that we look at either too much or not enough. And, in this case, it's usually, you know, not enough trace minerals or or, or vitamins that are involved in some in many of the cases that we see. So, um, when we think about about this, are there certain years that are worse than right. others? Right. We've had uh, we've had in the Midwest, you know, two years at least of back to back drought. So, our forages uh, don't usually contain the, the the vitamin vitamin A or vitamin E that we uh, that we would normally, or trace minerals as well. So. Uh, because the forages are stressed, uh, you know that's that's a that's an abnormal situation, and, and uh, you know it's the weak calf syndrome has, has been more of an issue the last two years because of drought, and particularly this year the the winter 2013 2014 has been long drawn out, very cold, you know a lot of a lot of moisture, and and just you know more more challenges for the cow calf producer to try to stay on top of. Sure. When, when you, um, you know, one of the things that I always remember somebody was mentioned as far as the disease aspect, they always mentioned BVD right. uh, potential. Is there any correlation? We looked at ear notches on all those 100 calves that we had in our uh, study that we looked at, and we, we did not find one uh, calf that we thought was persistently infected or, you know, potentially viremic from BVD. So it does, but that doesn't mean it's not involved, I think. You know, BVD is, is very common and, you know, a part of the syndrome. So uh, we didn't we didn't see it in the calves that we looked at, but that doesn't mean it's it's you know part of the part of the whole issue for sure. Sure. Well, let's take a break. <clears throat> when we come back from the break, we're going to talk more with Dr. Steve Ensley and wrap up uh, today's show talking about weak calf syndrome. We appreciate you watching Doc Talk. More after the break. Hi there, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Be sure to join me next week as my guest will be Dr. Daryl Trample. Dr. Trample is a poultry veterinarian who's going to talk about the plans for a secure egg supply and some of the things surrounding animal welfare and egg production. Be sure to join me here every Monday afternoon at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on RFD TV. And I'll see you down the road. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. We do use multi-man in our cow herd, and we're finding that there is a benefit. Um, it seems like those cows breed back better. 
And we also found that by giving our bulls uh, a shot of multi-man before, just before we turn them out, we really get a kick out of that. I've definitely recommended multi-man to several people and uh, it's a good product. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Steve Ensley, who is the section leader of veterinary toxicology at Iowa State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And we're talking about weak calf syndrome. And what are some of the things that people need to watch for as far as you've seen risk factors or things associated with weak calves um, that we might not think about? Well, typically in Iowa or in the Midwest in general, there's you know, in the last 10 years, we've seen a real increase in ethanol plants and so distiller co-products or corn co-products because of that ethanol uh, industry. So in Iowa, we use a lot of, we use a lot of these feeds uh, because they're inexpensive or, or you know, le le uh, less expensive than corn and uh, they provide a great, you know, great feed source for cattle. The downside is that the sulfur concentration in these feeds can be variable and sometimes very high and uh, the high sulfur feed are associated, one of the things that we associate those with commonly is polio uh, in, in feed lots. But we also see uh, in, in mature cows, uh, beef cows especially, uh, when the sulfur, when they're on a diet that's got high sulfur and, and they're on it continually, because it's inexpensive, uh, particularly the corn syrups we have, and they can be very high in sulfur, they, they will interfere, the high sulfur in the diet will interfere with uptake of trace minerals and, and vitamins as well. Copper, copper is the key one that we see, we initially saw a lot of issues with uh, and continue to see problems with copper uh, deficiency associated with high sulfur feeds. But also, uh, you know, some of these other trace minerals uh, that we, zinc, selenium, you know, we think are associated as well and vitamin E. So Well, make sure you have a good... Uh trace mineral program, work with your local co-op, local nutritionist, uh, even veterinarian can know right. a little bit about nutrition despite some of our uh, antics back and forth with our nutritional colleagues. Right. But uh, you know, one of the things too I think that, that's really interesting is the lab that you all have and the testing that's available. So you know, if people want to send in feed samples to you, what kind of testing? We, uh, we're, we're very fortunate at Iowa State to have a full service laboratory yet. I mean, the, uh, of the veterinary diagnostic labs in the US, uh, unfortunately, a lot of labs don't do their analytical chemistry now in-house because of the expense of the equipment. Uh, one of the pieces of equipment that we have that we, that's used probably heavily or as much as any piece in there is our, we have an ICP mass spec that will do this multiple mineral analysis all at one time and uh, it's about a $200,000 piece of equipment, which, but it's very, you know, if you're gonna look at trace minerals and you wanna do a quick job and, and be comprehensive, it, you know, it's, it's what you have to have in order to do that. And fortunately, we have that in our lab and it's, you know, a high, very high throughput instrument we, we depend on, you know, weekly, especially this time of year. I was gonna say, you probably get a lot of samples. Right. We, uh, you know, we are, we're, we're becoming more of a regional lab. A lot of the other labs around, uh, in the Midwest, you know, don't have a veterinary toxicology analytical section like we do. So, you know, that's great for us to see, you know, see these other samples come in that we get to work with. Well, thanks for being on the show today. Great information. All right. <laughs> Thank you for watching Doc Talk. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to find out more about what we do at Doc Talk, you can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Thanks for watching the show today, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value.
For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection, 